fancy meeting you here. Happy Saturday. As promised, I did save this section from our Celtic Witchcraft episode. It should be the previous episode on your feed right now if you want to scroll down. If you haven't listened to it, you might be a little bit confused or feel like there are pieces missing. But if you listen to this and then that, you'll feel even more informed. So it's up to you. I don't know your life. This was a bit tangenty and didn't really fit in with the vibe of the whole episode. So you get to hear me inspire some feminist rage in Emily and we get annoyed on behalf of our ancestors. I mentioned as well that the Druids were um, involved in the legal system. Uh, in Ireland, every single law student who, who studies law studies the Brehan Laws. So the Brehan Laws were the Celtic legal system. It's always touted as a really progressive, especially for women, legal system where women were granted like equal rights and you had divorce at will and wow. marriage rights and property rights and all of that. It's not as utopian as people like to make out. Like everything, you look into it more and it's not as amazing as it seems to be. But um, Right. It might have been better than like the Romans who had women as slaves. Yeah. Well, <laughs> But it wasn't like it is today where women could vote. <laughs> I mean, the Celts had slaves too, but it was probably better than the common law system that came in with the Normans in England and then eventually Ireland. So the Brehan Laws were a civil system, so it was more like settling disputes between people rather than like a criminal off with their head sort of thing. But it was like very much, you have done this wrong against this person, you must like give him four goats and all this kind of stuff. It was stuff. like mediation. Yeah, it was Yeah, very much very much based on like so mediation. He, he, I, do you hear what he's saying? He's <laughs> saying that he's mad because <laughs> you took his goats. Yeah. <laughs> You slapped his wife, so you owe him 10 goats, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, it existed in Ireland before the Norman invasion, which is 1169 for any of you history nerds. And it actually persisted quite a long time. It was only fully replaced by the British common law system in the 17th century. So there was a lot of holdouts. Um, people who are just like not recognizing the legal system just going, no, we do things our own way here. Right. So yeah, it's usually described as really progressive along gender roles. But what we have to remember is the Celts were a very hierarchical society. Like there was chieftains and like you reported to your chieftain and, you know, you were part of a clan and you, if you wronged one person's clan and all that. And it was also another great word, patrilineal. So everything went down from father to son. Women were mostly defined by the relationship to the men and their life. So it was your father and then your husband. And then if your husband died, it was your father or your brother or, you know. Your son or something. Yeah. The way a lot of women like in parts of the world would live today unfortunately it's so upsetting that it I feel like we griped about it a lot in the last episode but it's just one of those things that is so frustrating because when you're sort of defined by your relationship to a man it's just like come on <laughs> and like the fact that you know as we have seen and we will see like there was a lot of women that definitely would have used the system to their advantage and just been like well okay, I'm not allowed to own property, but I'm going to make sure I marry the man whose property I want to own. You know, that kind of way. Like, I'll own it by, by proxy. Playing like, the system. Yeah, why shouldn't she? She should play the system. She should. There were, like, some, like, really interesting aspects of it that was, like, it's so cool that it was like this, like, way back from, like, Iron Age times, like, right up until, like, medieval times. One of the better-known ones is the Brehan system allowed for nine different types of marriage. So this ranged from a marriage of equals where both parties would bring equal property. Maybe they're both from really good families, so you're just merging all of it. Down to, like, a one-night stand could form a matrimony fully legal i'm just thinking about a lot of friends <laughs> who would have had a lot of marriages <laughs> well the thinking behind this was in celtic society there was no such thing as an illegitimate child well that's nice if a woman produced offspring somebody was going to have to take care of her and take care of that child <laughs> There should have been no such thing as like a single mom yeah. who works two jobs, loves her kids and never stops. <laughs> With gentle hands in the heart of a fighter. <laughs> yeah. Jesus survived. <laughs> no, just the way you said somebody's going to have to take care of that kid. It made me think of a parent scolding their children. They're like, somebody's going to have to clean up this mess. 
It'd be nice if they could be like that now. Uh, instead of like being dragged through the courts for like, yeah, child maintenance or alimony or all of that. <laughs> but like anything, there's always a drawback. Husbands got automatic custody of children because it was patrilineal and everything went down through his lineage. If you said that like, oh, I had a one night stand with him and he's the father, okay, the baby must stay with him. The family stays together, but it's like the onus is like on the father. So he would have gotten automatic custody and he decides where the child lives and how it's brought up wow. and all of that. Yeah. Wow. One step forward, two steps back. <laughs> exactly. Like everything throughout history, it was always more favorable for the well-off. The more well-off the mother was, the better chance that she had that she would have a say in how her life would go. Yeah. And because they had this focus on procreation and progeny, so they had like at-will divorce, so you could divorce for a variety of reasons. We don't even have at-will divorce really in Ireland. You can have like yeah. no-fault divorce and stuff, but it's still a lot more difficult than it was in Celtic times. So men could um, divorce their wife if she wasn't able to give them a child. That's a bummer. Also, uh, wives could divorce her husband if he couldn't impregnate her. But there was another option for women. How, okay... But how are they diagnosing this? Yeah. How are they diagnosing who's at fault? <laughs> well, one thing that uh, the wife could do was she could go get impregnated by another man. Whoa. And if she did and she was married and she wanted to stay with her husband, he would need to bring up the baby as his own. Wow. <laughs> so that's one way to okay. prove that you can get <laughs> pregnant, I guess. She's like, I'm going to Jim's house. Some other reasons why you could divorce your husband because he was too fat, because he was impotent, because he was gay. This is all like focused on being able to produce children. So all of these reasons they're arguing means that less like he's able to produce children. The fat yeah. thing, I don't know. I think that's like a lot about like because they were so like obsessed with warriors and being, being really strong and all of that. So they thought like if a man looked like lazy or, you know, unable to fight in a war, then he couldn't produce a child. They love fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all gym shark bros. Mm -hmm. They had protein shakes. You could divorce your husband if he went drinking with his friends and told them about your sex life. If he like hey. <laughs> invaded your privacy like that. I'm pretty sure you know that I watch 90 Day Fiance or we watch it in this household. <laughs> and this guy went out with his fiance and then his friend and his friend's girlfriend. And then when the servers like she was like asking what they wanted or something like that. And he's like. You might as well make it a virgin because I basically am one right now. Uh, and he's just like, <laughs> and then she's like, "I want to leave." She's like, "I do not want to be here because that was very inappropriate." <laughs> Fuck yeah, it and was. Like, who, who does that? Yeah, see, the wedding <sighs> would be off then. Yeah, goodbye. If she was Celtic, she probably could have. Celtic men could have multiple wives. They had one called the Ket Winter, who was their first or their principal wife. And she was like the boss bitch. She had okay. full control over the other wives that he brought home. Wow. So she could divorce her husband if she didn't like one of the new wives that he brought home. The more you're talking about this, I'm thinking I don't really like it. <laughs> this whole thing that like people always talk about, it's like, it's such an amazing system for women. No, not really. I mean, there are Actually, some rights no. that are a lot better. Like in contrast, like in England, like in English law, like a man couldn't like remarry while his first wife was still alive even if they weren't together anymore that sort of thing and like wow. women couldn't own property whereas like celtic women did have like certain property rights and rights of like revenue they could command their own armies and stuff like that so there was a lot more freedoms but then there's a lot more like drawbacks like this right the three-day return period that i came across was if your husband brought home a new wife you could give her three days and if you don't like her do you get a gift card in return or will they deposit the money back in your account <laughs> she's left with you you can basically do anything you can beat the shit out of her you can oh order her around you can <laughs> You can make her do like all of the chores and all of that. Basically, the first wife decided what happened at the end of the three days. Wah, Whether wah. she was going to leave him or the new wife had to go or whatever the hell it was. I would I would hope that this sort of situation, um, that the women were better to each other than that. But yeah. I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I know. But you, like when you're competing for scraps, basically. Right. All of this was better for higher status women. Like higher status women, there was more like riches to go among them. There was bigger homes and, and all of that, you know? 
Yeah. Higher status women uh, were entitled to rights over their property even after they divorced. There probably was a dowry exchanged and she wasn't going to lose out on everything that her family gave over for him. And yeah, they could command their own soldiers, as I mentioned before. Whereas women of lower status were essentially treated as slaves. Actually, the name for like a female slave was the same name as a unit of currency. Oh, man. Yeah. The way it's explained is that they were so highly valued that they were a unit of currency, which is, I don't think that's the compliment you think it is. <laughs> you want it to be. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. She was a form of property. So the way it worked was if she was like assaulted, the way it was settled under the civil brehan system, her husband's owner, he was the one that the reparations were being paid to for the compensation. <laughs> I know. Emily's just like head in her hands, shaking her head. I know. <sighs> So Why is everything so depressing? <laughs> I know. But we're going to get into some magical women and women who oh, like, thank you. were breaking out of this and who were Sweet. Um, fucking the system. I love it. Yes. Um, Bring it on. I'm so, sad. <laughs> I know. Are you still here? If you listen to the end, go to our latest Instagram post and comment a witch emoji so we know that you're a real one. And I promise you'll get a shout out on episode 32. Oh, and guess what? You have an episode coming this Wednesday. It's an Emily episode and it's all about Norse witchcraft, which, hell yeah. As always, links, sources, all that good stuff's in the description. Get in touch if you need to. Okay, I'm going to go away and get a coffee. Bye. Bye.